everything out of those buildings because we have certain typologies and we have a lot of experience with doing this. Rotterdam has developed a tool which is called the demolition tool and basically that's a tool that you use to identify the materials in the building and to calculate the CO2 footprint for different uses of those materials. Sometimes it's more efficient to, to take waste material from a demolition building like um, CO, uh, concrete and to transport it a, a vast distance and use it as, as, as a road fill. Sometimes that's much better than reworking it to another product and sometimes not. So that's what the demolition tool does. And basically what we, this is a project we're developing in, uh, for Highplight. Uh, you were with Arjen Kastenberg mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was one of the four yeah. structures that we looked at. Yeah, he, he's done chip, but we're doing another one. It's called the Active Reuse House. Mm -hmm. And the active reuse house is based on this principle. Actually, what we do is we're using the demolition materials coming from our, this is our local, it's our input, what's available locally. The largest percentage is concrete. And if I design a, a sustainable house now, normally I would think, well, light dem, uh, design for dem, uh, disassembly um, and dry, dry connections. I wouldn't take concrete as a point of departure, but it's something we have in abundance. So. Um, basically what we do is we're designing a house based on the I idea of um, Circle Stud, which is Circle City. Circle City is a group of seven or eight uh, enterprises in, in the, re the region that has the ambition to create a circular economy and an inclusive economy. <coughs> so what Circle Stud says is that uh, resources are becoming scarcer. Um, we look at the entire building chain from demolition to making manufacturing new building elements to building a building, to demolishing it, so you close the cycle. And what, what CircleStat tries to do is, at every point in the whole cycle, to connect it to talent development. So to, to train young people in talent development programs to participate in every cycle. And also, if you apply this circular thinking to the building process, um, uh, it will, you come up with new kind of links in the chain, which create new jobs, potentially. So this house is based on the idea of um, a circular and inclusive economy, but also active house. I'm not sure if you're familiar with active house mm -hmm. as a principle. Uh, passive house, maybe some of you have heard of. Passive house is a, is a concept that really works well in a, in a European climate, not all European climates, let's say a moderate climate like the Netherlands. It's basically a house with a really, really thick jacket, very low energy demand, and with 20 square meters of photovoltaic cells on the roof, you can uh, be energy neutral. Uh, Active House is a, actually a reaction to this. It's something that's developed in the Scandinavian countries in the last five years. And Active House says, well, energy is great, but it's not about energy. It's about comfort. It's about health. So Active House has three main um, principles. The first is comfort, the second is energy, and the third is materials. But comfort is central. So the question with Active House is how to design a comfortable house it's a healthy house with as little possible environmental um, degradation yeah? and as energy e efficient as possible. So basically what we're doing here is we're developing this house based on these principles but this is an interesting loop because we're building the house using waste materials that are, are produced to new building elements so it's not like the Haka project where a door is a door. Here we're using it to create new products um, and we're linking it to what we call, a, with a material passport, to, to, what, to what we call a system integrator. Basically, the idea is that um, you're all familiar with product service systems. And so the idea is that we, we're leasing things more and more. Uh, it's not about the, the light fitting, it's about the light. It's not about the radiator, it's about the heat. Um, so product service systems uh, is a concept based on the life cycle of different elements in the building. So actually the idea is that you lease everything. And in this concept we're thinking about a combination between buying and leasing. So you buy the casco, you buy the frame, the concrete frame, because that's something that's going to be around for two or three hundred years. And you lease elements which have a shorter life cycle. And the, the interesting thing about that is if you lease elements, that have a short life cycle, then you can guarantee that they come back to the pr producer of those elements, um, which means that they can be disassembled and the materials can be optimally brought back into the, the material cycle. Um, so it's actually a, 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 a rental of a lease and buy concept. 
and we've introduced a new term which is a system integrator because this is a new niche in the market. It's a, a group that will facilitate this process. It doesn't exist yet, uh, but we think it's going to come into existence. So basically this is a group that will ensure that when your light needs to be changed, that uh, there's, a, there's an interactive template. So on your iPad you know, hey, you need to uh, call this number and the light will be changed and you'll get the newest light. It's quite a complex uh, concept, but it's something that is, is take, being taken very seriously. I won't get too much into the design of the project. It's based on uh, a lot of biochromatic principles. One interesting aspect is we're going to build the facade using second-hand uh, or waste um, tiles, concrete tiles from the pavements. We have a lot of waste tiles in Rotterdam from pavements. And we're going to break those in half and we're going to create a, 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 a low-maintenance green facade. Um, in Rotterdam, with climate adaptation, one of the things we try to do is, is disconnect our buildings from the, the sewage. So we try to capture as much rainwater as we can on the property. And another aspect, of course, is green facades are really interesting in terms of, of heat stress. Um, but green facades here cost roughly 600 euros a square meter. And they uh, have no insulative value. So you, know, you have a normal facade, which costs about 200 euros a square meter, and then you have a green facade. Um, and what we're trying to do here is actually do a low maintenance green facade. So actually one that's based on the microclimate and design the rainwater system so that rainwater gets captured on the roofs and that, well, you know, when you see a concrete facade, it always has these horrible black streaks huh? and little patches of moss. Uh, if you think, well, that's what nature does, uh, let's create a nice kind of pattern, a wallpaper, uh, and, and stream that in a way that really creates an attractive uh, image, then you get a green facade with a really interesting uh, motif. So that's something we're, we're going to build here on, on high flight. Uh, John, sorry. Yeah. We're going to more questions.